Hey guys, Mark from Gunplay Network, and today I'm bringing you my review of the MG RX78 One Year War version. Big thanks to Gus from Side7 Exports for sending this over. He has these and many more of the RX78 in stock. Take a look at the link in the description below. Alright, bit of a different angle of the frame today, just mixing it up. You can see it is. So this kit is a uh, front base from a game, the PS2 game. Uh, it's the One Year War version, I think that was the name of the game, and it looks pretty cool. It's got a different coloured inner frame than what we're usually seeing, a different frame. It's partly, I think, 1.5 uh, is what this is based on, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty detailed. I mean, in some areas could be better, but overall not too bad. Fully armoured up here, taking a look around, I went ahead and painted the backpack that you could see because I don't like that purple grey. I think it's hideous. I'm not sure what Bando is thinking. But not too bad if you just want to paint that one runner's worth of stuff, it's not too much, which is the backpack and weapons. Overall, I think this is the most detailed version of the RX-78, next to the Verkar. The most surface detail, I mean. So let's take a look now. Articulation. And the kit overall, the colors are pretty good, like I say, except for that backpack, which I painted up. You can see I did the inner part silver, the vernier silver, and that is MS gray from the Mr. Color Gundam color range on the backpack. And um, you'll see that also on the bazooka. The head will go down. Up. Oh. And it can pull off a pretty good um, pose there. Like, yeah, it can spin all the way around, but who needs to? I like the shortish white V fin on this compared to a yellow one. The arm will go up and then because of the amount of articulation you get in the shoulder here, up it goes and that's how you end up pulling off that final shooting pose. Obviously if the head's missing too, that'll help get it all the way up. But overall, that's some pretty good shoulder articulation right there. It'll come out a bit, but probably not as much as modern master grades where they can kind of pull all the way forward, but it will go all the way up. So that's, you know, in the plus column. Like I said, you can see that surface detail there. I intend on, the reason I haven't done any panel lining, uh, that turns all the way around and pegs, same with the arm. The reason I haven't panel lined or anything on this guys is I'm gonna paint the whole kit. So I'll do it afterwards. I'll post a quick shorty video. The elbow has great bend as well. The hands. I'm not a huge fan of the hands. I don't like the three one and fingers on this. Hopefully they'll tighten up a bit when I paint because I actually nearly, uh, I think the, the trigger finger on the right hand for mine is busted. It keeps popping out. So when I paint that'll tighten up a little. All right, if we move the arms up, what I should point out is that the core fighter I mentioned in the unboxing you don't get an actual core fighter in this. What you do is you get kind of like the illusion of a core fighter that's in there on a core block. And that kind of helps the, the waist strength, I guess. But you, you know, you lose that gimmick. Cockpit still opens, just no one or anything in there. It's just a, the top of the core fighter. So the waist isn't too bad, it's pretty solid. The verniers on the backpack will go up and down a bit. They're just on like a peg and ball joint. The all four skirts are pretty much identical and they're just on ball joints front and back so they can go up and down. Side skirts, they're just on a peg, on a poly cap. So you can kind of twist them a little. Uh, they go up a little, but they don't go up a great deal. The legs, biggest complaint in my unboxing, which I agree, the legs are on ball joints for the hips. There's not much you can do about that. It's just the design of the 1.5. Now, move the skirt, the leg does go up a decent way. It's got a great knee bend with a, you know, kind of moving the armor back gimmick. Uh, some good detail there on the legs as well, I should point out. The feet, the feet do, yeah, they do go up and back, but mine are quite loose. So, I, like I said, I'm hoping when I paint, that'll tighten those up. My feet are gone really, floppy on this kit they just uh sorry i lost side skirt and now my camera's flared the white yeah it's just kind of it's hard to explain they've gone like really loose and floppy so the kit's like wanting to fall over yeah he can kick himself in the back pretty much so good knee bend 
uh, feet, ankle, all good. He can't do the splits. Uh, you can't really turn too far because uh, there's no peg into the top for the waist part on these legs. It's all one solid piece. And because they're on a ball joint, limits your articulation. And you don't actually get an action base adapter on this kit, which we'll talk about when we get to the accessories. Here he is fully loaded up. So I've painted the beam rifle in a uh, matte black with some silver, some bronze. I was in a bit of a rush. I've got to finish the touch-ups on that. Uh, and I did a primer, camo black, silver, and then clear green for the scope piece. So it's, that's why it looks metallic green. Uh, the bazooka, I masked off, but need to finish a couple of rough edges on it. But if you want to get this bazooka looking, you know, like white, gray, or black, like actual actual anime colors there's a lot of painting and masking to be done there okay let's take a look at the accessories and here's the one you wore with everything that it comes with all right first up the amaro ray pilot figure now i'm pretty certain that this is an identical figure to the 1.5 the 2.0 i'm fairly certain they all share the same figure i'm not sure bandai has updated this at any point ever but you know it's a good representation so i'll paint him eventually Maybe I'm even doing him in some different colors because I've already got the uh, 3.0 painted up like uh, Armour Array down there. So I might paint him in a, a different yellow colored suit or something, but highly detailed. If you just wanted to primer it and panel wash it, it'd look all right too. Here's the beam rifle. So uh, like I said, you'll see a couple of like bits I don't need to finish. This was just in a uh, black. That was it. Scope in a few colors to get that metallic green and I did some bronze and some silver just to kind of break up the color scheme. It does need a panel line and a few dry transfers put on it now. The bazooka. So uh, compared to the, <clears throat> sorry, my voice just went. My, the bazooka is fairly solid. Uh, it's one piece, uh, nothing moves except for that piece, which on the side there, the gray, where you lock it into the back skirt or the uh, backpack. That's it. The handle doesn't move. This makes it near impossible to pose with because you have to do it all the work with the arm. And while it does have a good bend, the wrist sucks. So, you know, the hands aren't great. It's it's a good representation, but a lot of work to get it to look at this level. That's uh, three different colors. All right, the shield. Fairly standard Gundam shield. It's red with the yellow cross, uh, detailed on the back. You can store, I believe, the uh, beam rifle and the beam sabers can go on here. Uh, it holds pretty well in the arm and hand. So overall, yeah, not too bad. The Gundam hammer. Okay, so what this is, you get a complete length of chain that you saw in the unboxing, and then you get two little links of chain which actually attach one to the handle, one to the ball part, that then attach the chain to that. Okay, they're all right, they're kind of, they're all right, they're pretty strong, but the Gundam hammer itself, like the ball part, uh, all those are like 14 individual spikes that you have to cut off and de a bit of a pain. The handle is one solid piece as well. Uh, look, I, I don't think I'm gonna pose it with this. I think I'll just put it in the, uh, the Ziploc bag that I keep the spare parts for kits in uh, that I wanna keep aside. But overall, nice inclusion. The beam sabers, pretty standard fare. You get two beam saber hilts, but I do like the curved pink, whoops, there goes a the beam saber rolling. You do get the curved pink parts here. And I do like those because then when you're posing it, as you'll see it coming up, it gives it that like moving kind of motion look. Alrighty, comparison time. So let's take a look first up. We have the high grade. This is the Revive. Yes, I know it looks nothing like the Revive that you get out of a box. I did like a Spartan look kind of paint job. This was a few years ago. There's the RX-78 real grade, which is the mini 3.0. Or sorry, the 3.0 is the big real grade, I guess. Uh, if I move that, I can then place the 3.0 next to it. So you can see kind of like the different proportions and stuff there. Uh, I do prefer some aspects of the 3.0. It's much better. The weapons were better. Even the hands I hate were better but I do like the surface detail and look more of the one you wore. Okay, here it is next to the Mark II Titans 2.0 kit, which is my painted, uh, there's some scribing and stuff there, like it's not standard at all. Uh, GBWC entry from 2019, 2018. 
here he is holding up the beam rifle and shield in kind of a pose so yeah look he is perfectly capable of posing holding all the weapons with those hands the rifle is much easier to pose with uh, and is the beam saber compared to the bazooka though so just keep that in mind one thing here it is and you can get some cool poses out of this so despite only having the ball joint hips it can do what it says on the box like it can pull off those poses uh, you see the armor starts to come apart there in a few places the build process was fairly fun so I, I can't knock it for that it was all right it was quick it was easy painting though that might be a challenge uh, you know if you're a painter because there are pistons and stuff you'll need to disassemble and then you may need to widen the hole when you paint because they'll get bigger all right now i did say it did not include an action base adapter you did not see that in the accessories but if you have the action base uh, four and five you can actually take the claw kind of piece that comes with it and you can you know that's what it's made for clamping up under things or holding things uh like you'll see my destiny review coming up as well i used it for that Overall, you can get it on a stand and in a flying pose, and it does look pretty cool. But that is about the best you're ever gonna get to hold that bazooka. It is just, no articulation on that thing really hurts. Here it is holding the Gundam, Gundam hammer. So I, I'm not sure how many poses you could really pull off with this, this thing because there's no uh, interlocking parts for it to be held onto really, except at the, the handle end. Maybe if you wanted to kind of glue all the links in, in place or use some gloss coat to tighten everything up, you might be able to get it into like a, a throwing pose. But cool, cool inclusion nonetheless. Alrighty guys, and that brings me to the end of the review. Overall, I was pretty happy with this kit. I dig it. I am going to display it and I'm going to paint it. Next up, the rest of the kit now needs painting. As well as the figure up there. I think this is definitely one to pick up. Uh, like I said, Gus has heaps of uh, kits for the RX-78 on his um, website. It's just a, it's a fun kit. I love the look of it. I love the old schooledness of it. So if you're an original Gundam fan, you will enjoy this kit. All right, let's just face him around. So uh, that was one that doesn't show you in the manual, but you can actually put the bazooka that way on the backpack in the middle as a whole. Big thanks for watching, guys. Remember to like, leave us a comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Check out Side 7 Exports, and I'll catch you on the next video. Keep building.